He's been talking about Monero every single day for years and years and years. Today, the roosters came home to roost. So uh, mind your biz. Today is a good day for you. You deservedly uh, should earn all the adulation of those privacy coin people. It finally happened, everybody. We finally got the pump. Well, speaking of being careful, we have Mind Your Biz on here. You know, one of the top cybersecurity people. Just look at his background. He's inside of a computer right now as we speak. Now, <laughs> with this, you know, uh, recent news, we've seen a gigantic pump. And I'm talking about privacy coins. I know you love Monero. You're always tweeting about it. You're always up here, you know, extolling the virtues of these digital currencies that are privacy based. Do you think that this recent pump we've seen with Zcash and Monero is this due to the, you know, regulation that uh, or the executive order that just got released? Or is this more to do with, you know, maybe what's happening overseas? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, you can never fully decouple these things. Um, first off, again, thank you for having me back on the show as well. It's always a pleasure to be here, especially with the panelists that are here. I feel so humbled to be on the show with uh, with these uh, these great thought leaders. Uh, but as far as my take on it, I think that Monero and Zcash having that pump, I think part of it has to do with like you mentioned, news from abroad, but then yes, the domestic news as well. There tends to be a flight to hard assets, right? During times of uncertainty, but there's also a flight to a little bit of privacy in those hard assets. There's a reason that you have the gold bugs who always talk about precious metals being so important. And it's because you can keep it in a safe at home. You can self custody it, uh, custody it if you want to. Nobody does like they should, but you could if you wanted to. With cryptocurrencies, you make that promise of self-custody of hard assets and of private assets a reality in the same way that holding your own keys for, for Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency makes you a more sovereign individual. Well, doing the same thing for a privacy oriented cryptocurrency makes you a more sovereign and private individual. And especially as we've seen with protests internationally, as there have been lists made of people and there have been all kinds of uh, all kinds of sort of reprisal from police, from, from policy enforcers, right? I'm just going to dead name it in Canada, right? As people were out protesting, their Facebook accounts got sort of tallied. And these people had, they had courtesy calls at home, right? With, with police being sent to their homes because of their unpopular opinions. Well, when we know that blockchain is kind of, it can be used as a surveillance tool, people they, there is this flight to private assets. So I think it, it's the news in the aggregate, but I don't think it's because of what the Biden administration is releasing here, strictly speaking. I don't think it's just that, no. Okay, thanks for uh, that in, for that take. And I believe the binary in his background is his seed phrase, if any of our viewers like puzzles. So also hit that like button, everybody. I need you to hit that like button. Let's shock the YouTube algorithm. Let's shock them into forcing this video down everyone's feed. Altcoin Daily, would you ever consider using a, a gold-backed cryptocurrency as part of a diversified portfolio? Would you ever see it as, you know, possibly after a parabolic run-up for Bitcoin, would you see it as a maybe a, a safer asset or a safe haven asset? DZ, hell no. DZ, <laughs> hell no. What would you recommend to an investor who does like gold? Would you say, look, you need to mail me my gold, you know, or I'm going to the pawn shop and I'll pay, you know, that 2% premium? Yeah, I'll tell you, DZ, uh, on that question, I think the answer for me is hell, comma, maybe. So as far as anyone custodying any of this stuff hey now we got our bases covered as far as anybody custodying this stuff i'm far more partial to lead and brass we've talked about that before in times of great uncertainty i'm a much bigger fan of stockpiling and custodying lead and brass as opposed to gold and silver personally and i i feel like i have enough of that but i could probably use a little bit more i mean ask me again next week but custodying this stuff yeah it's it's only as useful as your ability to hold on to it right so and your ability to uh we'll, we'll say defend it that's without getting too uh, specific there. But I think that some of the stuff that's being discussed here, these these gold backed cryptocurrencies and gold backed stables, I'm not opposed to them. I think that, I mean, as was mentioned before, it's probably a better entry point for people who are crypto people to get exposure to gold as opposed to the other way around. The gold bugs, they if they are interested in self custody, they already got the fireproof safe or they've already got, you know, some third party location where they feel confident they can keep that gold or they're comfortable with the custodians that they've already uh, assigned the ownership of their gold, right? The custody of their gold. Uh, but with crypto people who are interested in some of the unique advantages and benefits of cryptocurrencies, I think we have a, a very unique opportunity in that DeFi exists, providing liquidity exists, 
if we can put some of these gold backed or gold pegged cryptocurrencies into a liquidity provider position, right into a liquidity pool, now we're earning yield on the price of gold. So it's the best of that world. It's not the best of both worlds, to be clear. Like I, to echo the the opinions that have gone on, all already been voiced here. I agree that the 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 greatest strength of gold is to be able to custody it. So this doesn't really leverage the greatest strength of gold, but you at least leverage the uh, the the price action of gold, and then you get the unique benefits of crypto. Um, just shamelessly, I'm only aware of one project that does this right now, or is is looking to do this. It's a little project on Cosmos called Comdex, where they're trying to allow for providing liquidity with gold and some other commodities. But I, I'm not really aware of how far they've gone in that direction. So the idea, it, like I've got my finger on the pulse of that that thing, that idea, because that makes sense to me, earning yield on tokenized gold. But in general, no, nah, if I really want to hold precious metals, I'm okay with it being semi-precious, ideally lead and brass. All right. And uh, you can read between the lines on that one, uh, chat. So mind your biz, you know, I'm kind of making some assumptions here. I'm guessing you were a fan of, you know, peer to peer file sharing in the past, you know, kind of speaks to your ethos of freedom and sovereign individual here. But, you know, when it comes to LimeWire, do you see this, you know, bringing innovation into the field similarly to how they did, you know, almost 20 years ago? Or do you think, you know, they're just not going to be able to attract those those uh, real smart, like, you know, tech and coders and, you know, all these uh, strong employees to build out something powerful. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. And first off, so my, my, my jam back in the day was Morpheus. That was the lesser known alternative there. So somebody mentioned Kazaa and the other ones. There were, there were so many of these desktop clients. But the bottom line was peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Yes, absolutely. Huge fan of it. When BitTorrent, the technology, not BitTorrent, the company, hit the scene, it was revolutionary. Frankly, it still is. A lot of the modern web is powered by some of the foundational uh, innovations that were that were, that were pioneered at that time. Uh, Bram Cohen, whatever he's working on now, right, aside from BitTorrent, eh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he's been able to innovate his way past that. Um, but BitTorrent was a, a transformational technology. Peer-to-peer -peer sharing is kind of what set the ethos for Bitcoin and then for every cryptocurrency after it. Um, the idea that we can host things in a sovereign way and just transact person to person is still a pretty radical idea. In fact, the internet has kind of become less sovereign and less free over the last 10 years or so than it was before and less usable in a lot of ways. So I do kind of miss those days in a lot of ways. Um, Web 2.0 for as convenience it made certain things, it made other things just really annoying and really hard to do. So I hope they can innovate something here, but I'm worried that a bit like how Justin Sun bought the BitTorrent brand, not the BitTorrent tech, because it's, you know, and at this point, it's quite old, right? It's legacy code. He bought the BitTorrent brand. And what's become of BitTorrent since it issued a token? Not much. They haven't innovated anything on top of it. And I suspect that's going to be exactly what happens with LimeWire too. I, I, I wish these two brothers all the best. And I hope that this, this platform that they're working on, I hope it works out well. Hate to see young startups not do well. Um, but I just don't, if they're following the footsteps of BitTorrent, I, I feel like that's already ended poorly. So I don't okay. have a whole lot of hope for, for that path. Maybe. All right. All right. Wait, I, I have a I mean, sound I effect could, for you. Do the <laughs> voice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Well, mind your biz. I'm glad you won on the day where Monero is pumping. I'm tired of seeing you tweet how many Moneros equals a Satoshi. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you do follow, he, he loves to post Monero. We're just kind of joking about it. But definitely follow Mind Your Biz if you do like good security tips. But hey, you won the show. Go ahead. Leave us with some parting thoughts, please. Uh, first off, guys, thanks for having me back on Around the Blockchain. Always a pleasure. Audience, while you're subscribing to all these channels, you can just go to sub.myb.lol to subscribe to my channel. As I mentioned before, offer security and privacy tips because the next frontier I strongly suspect with all this regulation and all this crazy news is going to be how to hold your coins privately. Guys, thanks for having me on the channel again. This is so much fun. It may say LOL, but cybersecurity is no laughing matter. And until next time, Bitsquad, it's easy out.